Hi, it's Ingrid. Welcome. Today we're going to create a mixed media project using some very simple techniques. And I'm going to show you how to create some depth and texture without adding bulk. Let's get started. I have the birthday butterfly set by Happy Little Stampers and the coordinating butterfly dies. You can see that I cut out several masks from some post-it notes here and they're kind of the sticky parts at the bottom. And we're gonna stamp onto a 12 inch by three inch piece of mixed media paper. This was just kind of a scrap that I had left over and it's gonna work perfect for this card. We're gonna use Onyx Black Versifying Pigment Ink. Now I'm gonna create a row of butterflies and normally when you cut with dyes, you have that excess and it's not something that I would usually recommend as a mask. But in this case, you know, we really have an outline image here and I'm going to stamp it in black. So I'm going to show you a quick little tip and technique once I have a couple stamped of how I fill in that gap that you get usually from a mask that goes beyond the image. So in this case, the dyes are a godsend because it makes it nice, quick, and easy to uh, create multiple images and I don't have to run the same dye through a cutting machine or cut many butterflies out. What you just saw was me heat setting uh, my pigment ink because it's still a very wet, sticky ink. Pigment ink lies on top of your paper rather than getting soaked in right away. So I didn't want it to smear before adding this mask down. Now you can see I'm, I'm kind of futzing with it and just making sure that it's exactly where I want it to be. And this is gonna cover my image up. So now anything that I stamp to the left, right, top or bottom, anywhere here, I'm only going to get the parts beyond the actual mask. And that's the whole purpose of a mask. So here you can see, I'm just kind of figuring out my placement. Now I held my block a little too close. I got a couple black smears to the left and right, but that's okay. I was able to stamp over those for the most part. Now you can see right where that uh, bottom part of that wing is, that part is actually not gonna show. And when you see me reveal the mask, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now, the first couple butterflies here, I'm gonna just doing these at full speed. And then the rest of it, I will speed up greatly so that you don't have to see that. You kind of get the gist of it. But you can see, I take my time trying to figure out exactly where to place things. And I thought this might be helpful to you. You know, sometimes it takes me several minutes to actually get the actual basic design down. Now here's the big reveal. And look at that, you have a butterfly kind of sitting on top of it. Now, like you just saw, I quickly heat set that. Of course, I did that most of that off camera. And this is what I'm using. I'm using a pigment ink pen. This is uh, by Stadler. And this is just a black liner. You can, of course, use a micron pen. Those are also pigment pens. And I'm just kind of filling in those gaps where you have a mask. Anytime you have a mask and you stamp something over it, there's that little tiny piece in between that doesn't really... Uh, get that image all the way down to the paper or sometimes it's kind of covering and it prevents it. So this is a very uh, easy image to just kind of fill in the gaps with, which was wonderful. I don't have to be an artist to do that. And uh, I ended up doing that for the whole project. Now I'm gonna speed up the rest. So you'll really just kind of see the same process done over and over again. I've really done a little bit of editing where the uh, heat setting is concerned, but I thought it might be helpful for you to just kind of see how my entire border kind of evolved. So just enjoy the music and I'll see you in a few seconds. Now, as I finish up drying those last couple, you can see here, we've got a great border. And now I'm just gonna quickly speed up this first part and then I'm gonna slow it down just so you can really see that main image that's sitting on top. You see all those big white gaps behind them and around the butterfly. That's really where that pigment liner is going to come in handy. Uh, right here, you can see that I'm just very gently uh, connecting it, but don't just think of just the outline image. You've got to remember all those little tiny veins in the wings as well. You can see here as I flip this, this is actually probably the worst one here. And you can see just by just extending that simple little line, it just really changes everything. So don't forget to use some of your dies. Um, if you're stamping in black, you can very easily fix it. And look at that, it's perfect. You can see the six different uh, 
shades of paint that I have. We have cobalt blue, Paris blue, ultramarine, phthalo, indigo, and turquoise. We're going to use a variety of these shades. Notice that some are bright and vibrant and some are a little bit more muted. And I thought that the two would be a nice mix together. You know, it's always nice to have something that's a little bit more muted, like a grayish blue versus a turquoise right next to it. It's going to really help them to pop and stand out. So first, what you're going to do is, as you see here, you're going to wet your butterfly. So I have a clean paintbrush, and this is actually one by Ranger. This is a number six paintbrush, just a round brush. And I'm just adding some clean water. And notice that there's no black coming up, and that's by using uh, that great ink by Versafine. You know, it's wonderful to watercolor with. It doesn't smear once it's dry, but the key is that it must be dry. So now we're just gonna drop in a little bit of turquoise. Now, as this video progresses, I'm gonna speed things up later on down the line, and I did a little bit more of a lighter wash uh, further on. It always seems to happen when I watercolor. I'm always heavy handed on the first one. I don't know about you. I think I should probably always have like a test image off to the side just to kind of get those kinks out uh, just because I don't watercolor every day. So what I did here is I added some color down and then I'm going to come back in and kind of push the color around a little bit. So when you start, you want to have more of a lighter, a lighter hand in the beginning because it's much easier to build up your color than it is to take it away, especially if you have a staining color. So I kind of left that the way it was and then I moved on to the next butterfly and also I started to change my the way that I kind of skipped around and that would be wise because I don't want to touch the color next to it so I probably should have moved on to like the fourth butterfly or done all the turquoise butterflies at once and then moved on to a different color that gives it a chance to dry in between which is what you want when you're painting in layers so here I'm laying down a very light wash of indigo and you can see I immediately uh, took a cue <laughs> from my first my first uh, butterfly and you know what I'm human too. I make mistakes and you know I don't get everything right always the first time and this is really a work in progress this project. Uh, I didn't make one ahead of time. You're seeing my process live but look at that. It's a really nice muted grayish blue next to that pop of turquoise. That's kind of what I was talking about having the couple of different types of tones of blue, uh, the different hues and uh, it looks really great. So now what I'm doing is I'm laying down color and this is really wet and wet right here. When you're laying down that uh, water ahead of time, you're working wet and wet. You can choose to work wet and dry if you want, uh, but without wetting your uh, butterfly ahead of time, I wanted the colors to be very soft and wanted them to blend. So here I was adding that darker color, hoping that it would really kind of have that ethereal blend. It didn't really work the way I wanted it to and I ended up pushing the color a little bit more towards the edges in the end um, and then coming back and doing a second layer and I, I recommend that if you're look, trying to duplicate what I did on my project now this is a very long border and what I did was I actually created two projects in one uh, I ended up using the ones to the right for our card and the one to the left I'm going to use for a different card so now I'm going to speed up the process and just kind of paint all the different butterflies and then I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit as well. Just enjoy the music and enjoy the process. If you've liked this video so far or you liked any of the things that I've done, be sure to subscribe. I have a little uh, button up here in the upper left hand corner and I will see you shortly.
So now that we've sped up large portions and we're actually going to jump quite a bit ahead here, we have our final little butterfly and this is kind of a half one and I'm going to paint this one in indigo. And you can see here as I'm adding the water, I don't have a whole lot of uh, place to work. So I'm going to end up adding my color down and I ended up adding it down rather heavy. Uh, so one of the things that I really wanted to achieve with this project and you know something you might want to consider when you're working on your own is keeping the balance of light and dark and especially with butterfly wings. Butterfly wings are mostly translucent. You know, you can really kind of see through them. Vellum is really a good uh, analogy for a butterfly wing. And so here I'm removing some of the color by coming in with a thirsty brush. You can do the same thing by coming in with a just a clean wet brush. You want to be careful about the amount of water that you add because you don't want to over water that area but you could see that I was kind of trying to push the color away which is what I did with a lot of the butterflies especially this one right here I was kind of pushing that color to the edges and trying to almost lift a little out kind of keeping that balance of light with bright and dark so you want to have a little bit of everything and you know when you're working on this when it's wet it's not a super friendly uh, piece to work with. Sometimes you really have to allow things to dry in between and I was kind of <laughs> working against myself here because this was so wet. So I was trying to add a little bit more color here to the edge and then just kind of allow that to dry naturally. Kind of keeping an eye on it and not really letting the color soak in too much to that area because it will start to bleed in a little. Uh, but it ended up working out perfectly, that little one. So now we're going to come back into some of the other ones. And here you see this is another one of the darker ones. We had a very light wash here, but this butterfly had completely dried. So I'm coming in with a super, super light wash, just kind of to kind of reactivate my surface, just give it some water, make it wet, so that now when I come in with more color, and again, this is indigo as well, you know, it's ready to work, you know, it's ready to blend. It won't give me a lot of harsh lines. So now that I'm coming in to add my contrast to my wings, I'm gonna start off by adding it to the exterior of the wings and then we're gonna kind of work it inward. We're just gonna kind of play a little bit here with it. Uh, again, I wanna keep some of that light while also depositing some dark throughout the butterfly. So I'm going to kind of pick my spots and you'll really notice this on the finished piece, how you have that one kind of uh, little uh, piece that goes across the back, the upper back of the butterfly. And that is really where I chose to add a lot of my mid-tones and darker tones, uh, you know, because balancing that with some of your highlights, your lighter areas where you're really allowing the white paper to shine through your translucent watercolors, uh, that's really what gives this its magic. So you can see here I'm adding a lot more of the uh, darker tone here to the, like I said, the exterior and especially the upper and just kind of really being selective about where I am dropping that in. So from there we'll just kind of pull it out and because we've gone ahead and added a very light wash over our existing first wash, uh, we have to be a little careful. We are trying to create a soft look. I didn't really want any harsh lines and that's why I made the entire surface wet. But you also need to be a little aware because you don't want it to be too wet where it's starting to bleed like it is right here. So I'm trying to control that and just really being uh, selective on where I am dropping those darker tones. The lightness is really the key. That is really what makes this work. So you can see it's starting to take shape here. Uh, I'm really enjoying some of the, uh, the darker and the mid tones there along with a lot of those uh, light highlights. Just kind of working on this a little bit more. And you'll see me actually add a lot more color to that little strap that goes across the back. Sometimes it's easier to pick it up, you know, it's such a, such a small piece, you know, work with it however it is comfortable for you. Flip your piece around. Just be careful of having any paint on your hands when you do so. Sometimes you may need to leave, some, leave something across a uh, drier piece so that you're not uh, adding color where you don't want to. So you can see that little tiny uh, triangle. I ended up dropping some extra color in every single one, just kind of giving it something a little different and unique. 
and I end up being a little uniform here on these butterflies since they are the same type and you can see here's where I'm adding that darker color and then I'm just gonna kind of blend that out a little bit and this is really uh, the darkest tone that I'm adding at point the one on the right side you can see how that that wing is just a little too wet because it's bleeding out and you'll see me kind of fight with it a little bit and kind of work on it I'll add uh, I come back in with a brush that doesn't have any color on it just to really blend that out uh, and ended up taking a little bit away and had to drop more color back on so but since it's wet you know you can play with it watercolor is actually very forgiving uh, sometimes the only thing that you can't do is you end up staining your paper and lift the color totally back out but just because you put something wrong in a certain spot, don't feel that you can't come in there with a dry brush and soak up extra water or come in with a clean brush and kind of pull some of the color away and rework it. You definitely have a little bit of play there. But that's looking pretty good. I like, I like how it has uh, some darker tones to it. So you can kind of see him pointing out to those darker areas there. It's looking pretty cool. He's really starting to take shape. And you can really see the difference between the butterfly on the left and the right. The one that doesn't have any darker tones or mid-tones and the one on the left. You see by adding those little tiny touches, I mean, it really makes a big difference. So I'm gonna speed this up and you can just sit back and watch a few more butterflies and then we'll jump ahead to the rest of the card. So you can see that we've gone ahead and added some of the uh, mid-tones and the darker tones to uh, several of the butterflies. We're coming now down the stretch here, I just have a couple more to do after this, but I just wanted to show you the finishing touches on this particular one. And you can see that it really kind of starting to jump off the page a little bit, uh, just by adding those little tiny touches. So I encourage you to just play around, and if you're uncomfortable, stamp one on just a scrap piece of paper and just play with the one. Uh, before uh, tackling something that has a big border where you're not really comfortable with it. But it's art, you know, it's a process. Just enjoy it. This was actually very relaxing. And here you see them. Here are all the butterflies. Don't they look great? I love it. The detail is fabulous. Uh, they've got some really nice character to each one. Uh, I really love the different shades of blue. I love how we have some more darker muted tones and some more bright, vibrant ones. And I really love how we have a lot of light shining through. Now that we've created our butterflies, we are gonna move on to the mixed media background. Here's a transition just to showcase what is coming up next. If you like this video, hit thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.